is the result. We're recording the session. Um, to share with you the results of um, uh, a special initiative that we did um, over the last year with the generous support of um, the Simply uh, Healthcare uh, Corporation. And uh, they made an opportunity available for us to make innovation grants available to um, adult educators in Florida. So we had a, a competitive application process um, last year, I think it was in the, in the spring, and um, the, the results uh, we're going to be sharing with you today. We had um, uh, five uh, recipients, uh, one of them uh, did not materialize, but the other four are here to, <clears throat> to share with you uh, their projects. This, this, the notion behind this was to uh, incentivize programs to try something new and, and different and, uh, and do a little bit experimentation um, with, you know, with the end result hopefully being to the benefit of these programs and most importantly um, to their students. So um, thank you again for joining us and I want to give a special thanks to uh, um, uh, Simply Healthcare. Uh, Liz Canton is joining us from um, Simply Healthcare, and she's been our primary point person on this initiative and also on a, on a, um, a health literacy uh, summit that we sponsored uh, in the fall. So it's been wonderful working with Simply Healthcare and with Liz. And with that, I'll, I'm just going to turn it over to her to, to say a few words. Liz? Thanks, Greg. Um, so I'm Liz. Um, on behalf of Simply Healthcare Plans, it's my pleasure to be here to support the incredible work of the Florida Literacy Coalition, FLC, and the work of our innovation grant winners. So at Simply, we are focused on continuously seeking ways to improve the whole health of our members. And we know that literacy has a direct impact on personal health and quality of life. Um, but if I remember the statistic correctly, I believe it's it's nearly one in four adults in Florida perform at or below a fifth grade reading level. So we know that adult literacy is a critical issue that affects many Floridians, particularly those who are economically disadvantaged or have limited access to education and training opportunities. I'm happy that Simply and FLC were able to partner to support the innovative programs that help address these issues by providing funding for creative, effective approaches to teaching literacy skills to adults in, in different communities. Um, Florida, as we know it, is a really diverse state uh, with many different communities, each with unique needs and challenges when it comes to adult literacy. A one-size-fits-all approach to literacy grants may not always be as effective in addressing these varied, varied needs, so by tailoring these literacy grants to the specific needs of each community, innovative approaches can be developed that take into account factors like language barriers, cultural differences, and access to technology and other resources. So I'll keep my speech short, uh, just because I know that we want to get into the presentations, but I'm just very excited to be here today and to be able to hear um, how these innovation projects have been going um, this past year. So I'll pass it back to you, Greg. Okay, thank you, Liz. Uh, now it's my great pleasure to introduce the um, representatives from the four organizations that were funded under the innovation grants to share with you a little bit about their projects over the last year. Uh, we have uh, Elena Farkas uh, with Project Light of Manatee. Uh, we also have Doris Yans with the Forest Hill uh, Community High School, uh, which is an adult ed high school. Um, and Tom Melville with the Literacy Council of Sarasota and Brian Spears with Pensacola State College. So with that, I think we'll go ahead and start with Elena if we can. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Elena. Just a second, let me share my screen. See what I want to do. <clears throat> Can you see my screen? Yep. Yes. Okay, um, good afternoon. I'm very happy to be part of this exciting um, opportunity to share the results of the grant. Uh, we are Project Light Language School, and the project name was Career Pathway. It was funded by Florida Literacy Coalition with support by Simply Healthcare. My name is Elena Farkas, and I'm an executive director of Project Light Language School. 
Okay, I'm trying to move through the slide. Okay, who we are, the, our official name is Project Light of Humanity. We're a nonprofit organization and we were, we started in 1994. The mission of the organization is to teach adults English language skills that are necessary to function at home, on the job, and in the community. And I just wanted to specify that our school year, because we run as a school from August till May, that is why our project was geared to address this particular time period. And we are located in Bradenton, Florida. I need to minimize the screen that I can see and you can see as well. Um, uh, it was a pilot program and uh, when we uh, received an announcement about the grant, we looked and reflected on student survey that we had. 40% of our students have education background, either high school or higher, and they cannot return to their profession because of the documents not being evaluated, translated and accredited in United States. Uh, they had lack of money for evaluation of outside of country diplomas. And uh, in addition to that, they had lack of knowledge of the US business etiquette. That is why that was the idea for the program, uh, for the project and the needs we really had and the project helped us to address those needs. Project Career Pathway objectives uh, were to help students financially in the evaluation of the educational documents through US accredited services, to teach a world-class business etiquette class with an ESL language component, to prepare resumes and job portfolios, and to conduct mock interviews that the objectives that we had for this particular project. These are how the objectives were addressed. The first objective to help students financially, uh, we um, spent time finding a special agency that could do this for us. We have many of them in the United States, but we had limitations with fundings. That is why we had to be very uh, frugal in a way how to um, address this issue. We identify a couple of agencies, Validential Corporation and uh, the other accredited institution that you have, International English Services. Couple of the documents that we had could not be evaluated in United, uh, translated in United States due to the lack of languages. That is why we found one agency that could translate a couple of documents and it was translated that service was located outside of the United States. The other objective was to teach a world-class business etiquette class with an ESL component. Uh, it was offered to our students in uh, uh, workshop format, and we had the special contractor who was specialized in this particular area, and uh, the person could speak four languages. That was additional help to us, and we were planning we plan to conduct 10 workshops. We finished seven and we have three more to go to finish by the end of the school year. This is a couple of pictures from the workshop. We have many pictures and videos, but I couldn't include everything right here. Um, the other uh, objectives were to prepare resumes and job portfolios. For that purpose, we created folders. Our students were all the time instructed that uh, this particular workshop was um, available through particular fundings and the um, folder stated clearly who was supporting this workshop. Our students were very pleased because it really um, requires time and knowledge for them to um, integrate with American society. The folders had workshop material, resume samples, and students' resumes that they wrote, English proficiency test results, translated and evaluated documents. And the Morgan interview, it was one of the objectives. That one will be completed in April, in May 2023. 
the results, how the results were measured, that was very important for us and it was part of the innovation grant. Uh, we used quantitative results approach. Uh, total participants of uh, this particular program, uh, we had 26, 10 students, uh, their documents were translated and they went through accreditation through the special agency. They're still in progress because it requires time to verify documents, to complete everything, it's still in progress. 16 students will be completing the workshop series in, 2000, in May 2023. We have used a couple of assessments uh, for English language profici proficiency skills. Uh, we use CASAS, a job and career readiness assessment. All students were assessed. It was intake progress tests. Um, uh, and you see the ESL results were five and six in reading and listening in four and six. And we will be conducting actual testing, speaking and writing assessment. Uh, we have some of the students already completed and showed the range of the English language proficiency, intermediate, high to advanced, mid. It's uh, this particular level surpass survival skills. The students can return back and perform exactly the same jobs as they did um, in their countries. And we will be uh, conducting exiting survey in May 2023 after everything is completed in this project. Challenges and lesson learned. Uh, any project has challenge, but we always look at that challenge as the lesson to learn <laughs> from that challenge. First of all, timing. Um, it was very difficult to find the suitable time for all the students because they work, they have family issues, and um, Saturday was only time that could work for everyone. Um, sometimes attendance was a problem because some things can happen and people cannot attend and we had to kind of run follow up workshops. Uh, uh, because of this timing issue, we will implement uh, something in lesson learned. I will talk about that a little bit later. Um, one of the challenges were to identify agencies because uh, some of the agencies only work with certain uh, documents that should come only in sealed envelopes. And um, not all the students could request that. They only had originalists with them that um, still had to go through special confirmation. We found the agency that could work with just originals and only provide certain services in the accreditation. And some of the agencies had very unreasonable fees for the services we need to find those. We spent time finding the ones that could work with us and to fit to our budget that we had. Now, what lesson learned? We learned that the services that we provided to our students are needed and it made our students happy and kind of showed them there is a bright view to continue to what they used to um, have and performed in their countries. The course that we had, uh, we decided to do as this now to offer more advanced students as a separate class that will be career pathway class that we offer to advanced students next fall. And we realize that we will need funding to support the accreditation process of students' documents. It means we will be looking for new grants or see how we can budget that we still can provide uh, these services to our students. And um, I would like to thank you to express our grace, merci et spasiba to Simply Healthcare for supporting uh, Florida Literacy Coalition in providing funds for this amazing innovation grant. Because we always looked for funding to start this project, but we were limited. But this particular grant really showed us that what uh, we can do to help our students further. And I would like to read a thank you that I put in my, um, uh, report. 
Thank you to Florida Literacy Coalition and Simply Healthcare for funding this pilot project. This opportunity allowed us to support our students and give them hope for a clear and bright path to further their education and not start their career in education from the ground zero. In addition, the opportunities this project provided confirmed to newcomers the fundamental rights for instance, education, work, freedom of choices for immigrants to continue their quality of life in the United States and provided them with the knowledge they could share with their immigrant community. As far as the school is concerned, this project helped us identify one more area of services we can provide newcomers in the coming years. Thank you very much. We really grateful for Florida Literacy Coalition and Simply Healthcare. Well, thank you, Elena, and congratulations on your project. <laughs> and certainly with a focus on folks who are working professionals and have education credentials in their home country and be able to transfer uh, that, those documents and be able to get a good head start on what they're doing as well as learning about uh, you know, etiquette and, and business practices here in the United States. So um, a very uh, interesting project and thank you for sharing. Next up, we have uh, Doris Yance, uh, who's gonna share with us a little bit about a really interesting program they have on a home, uh, mobile home health aid certification program for migrant workers. So Doris. Yeah. Thank you, Elena. I think you're on mute, Doris, maybe. Oops. Yeah, you're on mute, Doris. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Hi, everyone. Um, I would like to begin with a sincere thank you to Elizabeth Canton from Simply Healthcare and Greg Smith with the Florida Literacy Coalition you know, for their 2022 innovation grant and for the opportunity today to share about our innovation project. Um, Again, thank you. So on this slide, it shows myself and Monica Pompensky. She's joining us today. Um, this is our Twitter moment. You know, as you can see, we're excited to share this uh, wonderful uh, news that um, we, you know, we got the scholarship for our students. Um, again, Monica was very instrumental and helping me gathering the information. And she wrote the grant proposal and she created our bridge program, which I'll go into details in a little later in our presentation. And Elizabeth, just so you know, additional notifications and announcements went out to our faculty, our staff, directors in, um, in the adult education and actually day school, like the director of multicultural migrant programs, she heard about it. So uh, again, Simply Healthcare the name was out there. <laughs> so, so what did we do? Um, with our innovation project, we sought to serve a specific population of Spanish speaking migrant women who worked in the fields of Belglade. And these women include young single mothers, they live a migrant life and they travel together in groups, you know, wherever the work is. And, so why, why the migrant women? Well, just to give you a little bit of history, when we went into COVID and you know, we were kind of doing in, um, online learning, distant learning, I, um, I run also a GED program at Forest Hill High School and GED in Spanish. So uh, adults have the opportunity to earn their high school diploma through GED instruction in Spanish because the state offers the exams in Spanish. And I met some migrant women um, that, you know, since there was no work at the time, they decided to get their G diploma. Once I heard their stories, good and bad, you know, being kind of connected and uh, also started working with the migrant department for the school district of Palm Beach County in, in Belk Lake area. And it just became apparent to us that we had to actually make a difference and impact these women in, in some shape or form. So in this slide, you're gonna see the group of women that are the recipients of the uh, scholarship. And then of course, to the right, you'll see, you know, what they do. <laughs> so it's a kind of a contrast. I just wanted to include that. 
And that's our teacher, Mr. Barcenas. He's the one in the, in the blue shirt. And these are most of the recipients. Okay, so I'd like to share a brief description about our home health aid program. And it was created in the fall of 2019. It's the first ever Spanish instruction for home health aid certification program in the school district of Palm Beach County. And it continues to be the only one of its kind. Um, there's two certifications. It's, they receive their basic healthcare certification, which compose, is composed of 90 hours and their home health certification, which is a 70 hour program. And they also receive their CPR and first aid certification. And everything is taught in Spanish, the books in Spanish. They receive um, a medical kit and a uniform. We also worked with community partner quality uh, family care and they are a home care referral agency and they assist our graduates with uh, placement, work placement. Many of our graduates have, you know, worked in the healthcare field. Um, like during COVID, they were working in uh, COVID testing centers. Some of them are working with plastic surgeons or other medical offices. Um, and we have a few of them that are actually working with the Caridad Center in different um, type of positions, but all related to the medical field. And to be honest with you, the certification has truly opened doors in pursuing further education along with various career pathways. So once they have a better command of the English language, they can actually, with our program, continue to get a certification in phlebotomy or an electrocardiograph technology and other programs. And our uh, teacher, Jorge Barcena, he's our program instructor. He works in our medical acad science academy and he's been uh, teaching for seven years and he was very crucial in opening this first Spanish home health aid certification program. And on the slide, you'll see uh, to the left is our flyer. Um, the document to the right of that is the actual tuition details and then additional pictures of our recipients. They're super excited. Really great group of wonderful women. So why do we want to you know, do this project? Because it addressed three barriers that these women faced and um, language. You know, most of the tech programs are in English and, you know, there was no high school. Another barrier was no high school diploma or equivalent. And usually most programs, career programs have a prerequisite where they're requiring a high school uh, diploma or an equivalent. And it doesn't mean that these women, you know, are uneducated, just, you know, they just don't have, may not have access to their diploma. And then the lack of resources because, technical training can be very expensive. So I met with several eligible women, you know, they're smart, capable, hungry for learning, and they want to break the cycle and create a better future for themselves and their families. And when the six participants initially realized they did not have to first learn English and then not have to produce a high school diploma or anything, and of course they had financial support, well, that was like a sign of real hope. And this innovation project opened the doors for them to attend a credentialing program and they became actually unstoppable. So again, thank you. So uh, this is an overview of our project, um, the components of our project. So we selected uh, six uh, participants and they were enrolled in a three month certification program in Spanish. They also received the ESOL bridge lessons with an emphasis on digital literacy, hybrid instruction. And we, we actually interviewed each of the participants. We wanted to know their backgrounds and their experiences, you know, personal experiences, professional experiences, and of course, experiences within the program. And, um, and we were thrill, thrilled with the project results. So I plan to highlight only three of what's listed here and you can see that they're highlighted in blue. Um, so we had 100% success. All participants are HHA certified. And you know now they have a real opportunity 
to find some position in the medical field. Not only, yes, of course, HHA, but like I've said before, there's been other opportunities where they work in different capacities, but still in the medical field. And as students learned about foundational healthcare practices, you know, they can apply, which is, I know, something that was part of your um, request, that they can apply the skills that they learned in their daily lives to support their own parenting and caregiving responsibilities. So I know we can't measure all of the outcomes, but their lives have changed, and we know that we have made an impact by boosting their self-confidence and opening their eyes to lifelong learning. So challenges and lessons learned, there, there were quite a few. I will tell you this, something personal, it's not part of my script, but I did, I did realize that you have to connect and surround yourself with people that have the same mission and vision. <laughs> Otherwise it makes it a little impossible. So um, we had logistical issues related to the mobile component that we wanted to bring HHA or home health aid to Belk Wayne. But, um, and to be honest with you, when that, came about it I just it it was uh I thought the whole project was going to fall apart but you know I was able to group with my team and we put our heads together including the students and we made it happen the women carpooled once a week to our site for the practicum piece and then they participated in um, distance learning for all the other lessons and um, when COVID and when we had COVID and hurricane closures came, you know, part of the picture, then we added in-person Saturday classes and they made it happen. They actually made it happen. So with the results of this successful innovation project, we want to further develop two main goals, which is the funding sources so that other field workers have access to the HHA, HHA certification and two, to develop the ESOL Bridge curriculum to include in future terms. And again, I wanna say thank you. Together, we are changing lives. Very good. Well, thank you, Doris. Impressive program. And it's clear to me that you are changing lives. And to, to do a, a, a Spanish HHA certification, couple that with uh, English instruction, I think is a unique, very unique um, uh, program. Did you say they're the only, only program in Florida that's offering the home health aid in Spanish? I would, I'm not going to say in Florida, but in the school district of Palm Beach County under the okay. adult ed department. Okay. We did have a question as to whether the certification exam could be taken in Spanish. So the certification exam is an in-house exam and yes, it's conducted in Spanish. Okay. Very good. Uh, and if anybody has questions as we go along, please feel free to put them in chat and we'll also be opening it up for questions at the end for, for Q and A. Um, Next up, we have Tom Melville uh, with Literacy Council of Sarasota, who also has a healthcare career pathways related initiative. Tom? All right, thank you, Greg. Let's see if we can get started here. Everyone see that up on the screen? Yep, got it. We're good? Okay, good. Well, our innovative uh, literacy innovation project, we, um, we titled uh, Healthcare Career Pathways. It seems to be a theme. Um, and uh, very appropriate. So again, like everyone else, I would like to thank, you know, both you, Liz, and Simply Healthcare, and Greg with Florida Literacy Coalition. You guys do a wonderful job keeping us uh, apprised and um, knowledgeable of different funding sources and new opportunities. And this is one that we really uh, appreciated this past year. We've been wanting to do something in the area of careers to sort of bridge you know, the um, the English learning skills with career development, because typically that's, you know, very motivating for all our adult learners, as we know. Lots of times the focus is improve their family situation, their household situation, and their their own uh, economic situation, jobs, careers, you know, better paying jobs. And so this fell right, it was the, the, um, the, the right project at the right price for the right timing. So again, thank you very much. Uh, our mission with the Literacy Council of Sarasota, we're small. We're a nonprofit 501c3. We have a, a small but mighty staff of, of three people. 
and lots of volunteers. And our mission is to improve uh, literacy in Sarasota County through uh, personalized needs-based one-on-one tutoring and small group instruction. And our, envision, our vision is that all adults in our community have the literacy and English communication skills they need to succeed in life and thrive. And currently, uh, we're serving about 250 adult learners each week. Um, and again, we're leveraging that through volunteers and through contracted instructors. And for that 250, we have about 100 that are one-on-one -on -one tutors, you know, tutoring, and then about another 150 adult learners that we have in both online and in-person classes um, among about 18 uh, online and in-person classes. So that keeps us pretty busy. Um, and we chose this particular approach when we were you know, applying for this grant, um, basically to address you know, the needs that I think we all know are happening in our communities these days, especially with unemployment being so low. At the time that we, had, we wrote this grant last year, it was under 3%. Um, I think I just checked last night. I think uh, unemployment rate here in Sarasota is like 2.3%. It's 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 um it's a it's it's a real it's, there's a labor shortage as we know you know across the country, but you know of course in here you know particularly in Florida, employers you know finding difficulty you know finding employees, and one sector that's been I think disproportionately impacted is the healthcare sector. In no small part due to the COVID, you know, pandemic and the strains that it put on the healthcare sector, and um, still suffering from that. So it's not only, of course, we always hear a short of nurses and doctors, but there's other basic entry-level healthcare positions, um, such as hospital orderlies or transporters or technicians. Um, you know, a whole variety of of um, jobs that you know that are left unfilled. And so in our project um, planning and um, and the way we develop this is that we have two primary partners that we worked with with our healthcare career pathways. And that's our largest, um, probably the largest in our region, um, Sarasota uh, Memorial Hospital, or as they refer to themselves, Sarasota Memorial Healthcare System. I'm very interested in this project. And they've been working also along with us with a faith-based organization, All Saints Ministries, which um, turns out to be you know, um, a, a great uh, working relationship um, between and among all of us. So Sarasota Memorial Hospital is Sarasota County's largest employer. It has upwards of 8,000 employees. Um, it continues to grow. Um, it's, it's a wonderful uh, asset for our community. Um, and even with that, though, they have literally hundreds and hundreds of unfilled positions at all levels. And so they are very interested in anything they can do, you know, to help, um, you know, gain employees, you know, for for their hospital and the healthcare system locally. Um, and then all, uh, all, face, uh, all Saints Ministries provides uh, support in particular for new immigrants. And so this is the way we set up our model. Um, we felt this model is innovative because it combines economic stability and support that adult learners need to rapidly, more rapidly acquire English language literacy skills, while at the same time helping meet the dire employment needs of our local primary healthcare provider. And the way the model actually works is that the hospital, Sarasota Memorial, contracts with All Saints Ministries for basically temporary employees. And that's why, and the reason for that is that All Saints Ministries can provide additional services that helps provide stability so that the participating adult learners can actually go to class. Um, so All Saints not only pays a living wage, but they also provide housing, food, transportation assistance. And they also stipulate that taking these ESL classes is a condition of their employment. Because if anyone's, you know, if you've been in this field for a long time, you realize that attendance gets really sketchy because it's not always the first order of business. It's about you know, feeding the kids, paying the rent, having gas money, having transportation. There's a, there's a multitude of issues and barriers that with this particular model, we were able to sort of mitigate and overcome because of this unique partnership that we have between the hospital, All Saints Ministries, and then of course, our piece in it. Um, as far as our participating adults learning English, so they would qualify for better paying jobs and perhaps more um, instead of temporary employment through All Saints Ministries actually apply and get permanent employment at the hospital. 
we use the step forward ESL curriculum. We find that that's a very effective curriculum for us, very flexible. It's based, um, it works with the Oxford Picture Dictionary, and it really focuses on um, speaking and listening first with reading and writing coming more secondary, because those are the skills that people need, you know, initially. And then, of course, there's a healthcare workplace literacy in itself, healthcare, hospital-specific vocabulary, terms, jargon, the way the systems work, on-site experiential learning, all that was incorporated into these classes, you know, as part of, as part of our program model. Um, we had a few challenges. Uh, Sarasota Memorial uh, Hospital wanted, uh, we, we were starting out with maybe about, you know, a couple dozen through uh, All Saints Ministries, and the hospital had been contracting with a local college for ESL classes for employees, but it wasn't working out. They really liked our model and our approach better. So um, they added more and more employees into it, just even as we were getting started. So it, you know, even almost before we started, we were scaling up uh, to take on more. But some of the challenges you know, initially is, and again, you're working with a big hospital and it's human resources department, um, they didn't want to pay them to attend initially. And so we said, well, you know, that's sort of a non-starter. <laughs> you know, people are not necessarily take their own time, um, especially if, if they're feeling it's sort of work-related. So anyway, we worked that out, and then the hospital did start paying, you know, their employees to attend these classes, uh, very similar and almost identical to the same wage that All Saints Ministries was paying. So that worked out well. Um, and then also initially, um, and, and we've run into this before and we've worked with outside parties that really aren't necessarily, um, it's not their bailiwick, adult you know, education, English language acquisition, because they're native speakers for the most part. They didn't realize that you can't just jump into workplace literacy with non-English speakers and expect that to work. There might be some, they might understand some words and whatnot, but you have to really have a foundational you know, English skills in order for some, even these terminology, this jargon, et cetera, to actually make sense. So we had this sort of, just as we're getting up to speed with management in the hospital on, on those fronts, um, there was a change in hospital management. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it was about juggling and adapting and being really patient and almost basically informing the hospital about how the suits would work. And they finally did, you know, come around. Um, and so that was, you know, that was all good. We worked all those things out and you know, we're chugging along, you know, just very nicely right now. The other challenge, and we found this even before the pandemic, is that when you're when you're teaching English only once a week, you know, one in-person class, because that's the time that they can afford, um, certainly they can acquire English language skills, but it's much slower. And so we always try to encourage, and we did, and this is working out better, and I'll explain in a minute, but it's always better to have more than just one class a week. So we've been up to like two classes a week now, um, both in-person and then we've been able to enroll a lot of the students into some of our online classes that are ongoing that I just mentioned. And so, you know, they can do that also on their own. And that seems to have worked out uh, pretty well. Um, our, one of our first objectives, our first objective with this was that we would uh, serve about 20 to 25 adult learners to improve their English literacy communication skills so they could apply when ready for a living wage jobs or employment at Sarasota Memorial. And our, you know, the upshot is that um, we're almost at double that amount. We currently have 41 adult learners participating in the program with their job supervisors continue to report high satisfaction with their progress. They can sort of see it on a week to week, month to month basis that um, they can communicate a little bit better. Um, they, they know the terminology, they know the jargon and, and um, they're doing better at work and happy to report that 10 of the All Saints Ministries uh, um, temporary employees have now become permanent hospital employees you know, during this past year. And so we had one class that graduated, we celebrated, and uh, here they are with their certificates. Um, just so you know, that blue shirt, that's, that's the Sarasota Memorial Hospital you know, blue shirt. And you can see the gentleman here uh, in the center, he's got his, you know, his name badge, so he's all ready to go and, you know, very excited that they were able to transition from the All Saints Ministries program and become regular full-time employees at Sarasota Memorial Hospital. So again, we're very pleased with that result, and we think that's going to continue. Um, our second objective with this grant was that we would have a replicable, replicable model with a goal of scaling up the number of adult learners enrolled in our enrolled in our healthcare pathways project 
Well, uh, we scaled up pretty quickly. Um, went from 20 to 25 to over 40. So, um, and uh, Sarasota Memorial Hospital is already interested in more ESL classes. So I think working with the hospital, giving the scale of, of their level of employees, we feel that this program certainly is going to, you know, uh, grow and, uh, and improve over time. The other thing that was a nice thing that came out of this is the same time as we applied and we received this uh, literacy innovation grant, we've been thinking a little bit larger beyond healthcare because as our adult learners come to us from various backgrounds, cultural, you know, professional backgrounds, educational backgrounds, um, their, their aspirations for jobs, careers is very individualized. And so we've basically changed this a little bit. We've subsumed our healthcare career pathways into a larger career pathways program that we're now launching that really focuses individually on a little bit higher level English speaking learners that really want to move on with a different job, start their own business, um, maybe pick up a career that they had from their home country. It really just depends on the individual. And this, this really helped push us into this direction. And now we have a whole new career pathways program that we're continuing to pilot for the remainder of this fiscal year. So we're very happy with that. Um, another happy thing that happened with this project is um, one, of our, one of my board members works for Regions Bank. And she was all excited to tell uh, one of her fellow vice presidents. And so he got involved. So region banks actually uh, wanted to participate in this program and were able to leverage a grant that they provided to us for 20 refurbished laptops from a, another new community partner called eSmart Recycling out of Tampa. And so we're able to get 20 refurbished, you know, you know basically state-of-the-art laptops for um, about half of our program participants which of course helps you know, bridge the div digital divide, but also was able, enabled half the class to participate because now they had a laptop in our online English language you know, programs so they could further you know, improve on their English. And so this was another you know, happy outcome um, of this whole project. And so here we are, you know, when the laptops arrived, uh, we got everybody involved. There's myself and our staff there um, Regions Bank folks are standing up in the back. We have representatives from Sarasota Memorial here and from eSmart uh, Recycling. And again, this is something, this is a new partnership that we're going to continue to build upon and, uh, and not only help people with their career progression in healthcare and, and otherwise, but also to help get laptops because, again, digital literacy these days is just as important as health literacy, financial literacy, et cetera. So, and again, can't thank you enough. Because uh, a lot of this wouldn't have happened without Florida Literacy Coalition and without the help of Simply Healthcare. So again, thank you so much. Well, thank you, Tom. It's a wonderful partnership you have there with Sarasota Memorial and, and All Saints. And I thought it was really interesting that no sooner had you started that they had a bunch of current employees that they wanted to have part of the part of the classes and, and not only the English classes, but your healthcare workplace literacy that really allows them to focus on workplace vocabulary and systems and so forth. So it sounds like a wonderful initiative. And, uh, and the fact that Regions Bank uh, heard about it and wanted to be part of it, that's great. You never know where these things are going to lead sometimes. So thank oh, you. As they say, Greg, you know, nothing succeeds like success. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, next up, we have uh, Brian Spears with Pensacola State College to talk a little bit about their SOUL curriculum. Brian? Uh, All right. Um, everybody see the screen? Yep. All right. So what we did was um, SOUL is um, self-organized learning environment. Um, as everybody knows, our traditional uh, classrooms were forever changed during COVID. Um, Prior to COVID, we'd never had any online classes or any remote capability for our program. Um, and then we initiated uh, online classes for our ESOL students. Um, so to try to get them engaged and having relevancy from the remote action, we decided to implement the SOUL process into our IET programs. Um, so let's see here. Uh, this is part of the choices that we have that they had for the matrix. 
So there was a structured matrix, control, guided, and free. Um, so it allows for big questions. So it uses the 21st century learning and innovation skills is the process for it. So it integrates in critical thinking and problem solving. Um, it helps them with collaboration with their peers, um, agility and adaptability. Um, we get It helps them with effectively with their oral and written communications, um, accessing and analyzing information and it allows them to have curiosity and imagination. Um, so there's three steps. You have the big question, um, and then they start with the big question, and then it allows them to investigate on that question, and then they have a review, which we allow them to do a presentation. Um, and the students get up and do the presentations for their other students. Um, so this is some of the questions that some of the students had come up with and some of our instructors. These are examples um, of some of the questions, but I also have, this is actually one of the lesson plans that they had for one of the classes. And the question was, what is a problem that affects the health of your community? Um, so it walks through the uh, procedure for it, where they gather their preparations, um, they introduce the question, um, and then they do the investigation. Uh, so the investigation part of it was a little bit tricky because English not being their first language, um, the instructional part of it was a little problematic for us because we had to go in and have pre-classes for key terminologies that they would use for their internet research because all of it, they, we would allow them to use the technology, digital technology um, to search this on the internet to provide for their presentations. So as you can see, when they went in, we all have a computer and they would do their research for their collaborations. Um, I just had a couple of pictures here. So they get up and do their presentations at the end. Um, We problematic lessons that we've learned so far is that our remote students, so we have around 150 students um, and about half of those students are remote. So we were having concerns of the effectiveness of the remote classes because um, they're just getting instruction. So we wanted to try to include them um, in our program. So initiating the sole process is allowing them to collaborating groups in their um, Zoom meetings in the breakout rooms where they can collaborate together and work together to help build and work upon their communication skills in English. Um, so we have each teacher after they implement um, the presentations, they kind of work out a reflection so this is kind of how we gauge the interaction with the uh, students as the teacher has a reflection and then the students will also conduct an exit um, reflection of what they've learned and they would all individually um, explain the big question to see how much that they've uh, explored into this. Um, as you can see, this teacher she has some issues explaining because she had to do the key terminology with them in their native language. Um, knowing exactly how they did it is assigning, assigning roles for their groups because they were in groups of threes. Um, they worked out fairly well. They worked effect effectively and efficiently but we noticed the ones who worked more collaborated together were more creative in their thought processes. Um, so we're trying to work out integrating this into a actual in, uh, innovations fair where we're gonna put this out to all of our students in each classroom to provide um, a specific set of uh, big questions for them to make their presentations and we're gonna put them on display at our main campus here um, at our building for all of the students to come through 
And so we're trying to figure out how to get our online remote students to engage in this. Um, we specifically went in and uh, the, the remote part was a little bit hard for us um, because we're trying to demonstrate flexibility with the students in their collaborations. Um, but we are working currently with that. Um, our summer, it, like I said, it's an ongoing for us. We still have our summer classes that we're going to be implementing this in also. Um, and that is the end of my slide. Uh, is that, sorry, did you say you wrapped up? Yeah, that was the end of my slide presentation. There. Okay, thank you, Brian. Yeah. That sounds like an interesting curriculum, uh, really emanating from students' own questions and developing critical thinking, communication, research skills, and so forth. Uh, I'd be interested to hear how that innovation fair goes. Um, sounds like kind of taken to the next level. So with that, um, let's open it up for questions. I know we had uh, one question, I believe it was for Doris um, from Veronica. Uh, can you share more information about on the ESOL bridge lessons? Hi, this is Monica. Hello, everyone. Um, Hi. Doris just texted to say that she was kicked out of the meeting. She's had a loss of power oh, in her location. Power. Okay. <laughs> so I would be happy to answer okay. and respond to that question sure. in place of Doris. Um, the starting point for that ESOL, com ESOL bridge component, we really wanted to make the HHA certification program more robust by adding an English component, a supplement of some kind, because we know the English proficiency was relatively low for the population that we were working with. El Cate is English language, um, English language for career and technical education. El Cate, we wanted to hire an El Cate, a technical instructor. That was our plan. We got into it. El Cate instruction requires a level of English proficiency that the learners didn't have to begin with. Okay, still wanted to make this work. We wanted to give them an English component. I am an ESL teacher. I teach at Forest Hill High School, level four in the adult ed program. Okay, I'll create the lessons. It's an exploratory project. Let's get creative. And that's what we did. I use various materials in my teaching. And two, especially, were very important, the Burlington English program and also the standout program, well-recognized. And they do have health literature materials within their programs. They have online platform that I was able to use with the hybrid instruction that I was giving them. And we created these eight lessons, eight one-hour lessons that were added on to the existing instruction over that three-month period. The real gift was for me to be able to witness how they started very withdrawn, can't do English, no English, no English, but they all knew much more than they realized. And this really drew it out of them. We now have some of the students after this program, they want to learn English. They've enrolled in ESOL classes. It's just beautiful to see. So it's a valuable addition to the program. The next, is, the next step is to actually create the curriculum that will be used regularly in future terms. So it was worth it. Thank you, thank you. I see you, Liz, there to Greg. This has been an amazing program to be a part of. Hugely grateful. Going to do more. Thank you, Monica, for sharing that. I think it's amazing that you took the time to do those bridge lessons. I, I fully understand that's not a, an easy uh, process. So congratulations. Thank you to Thank all. You. Total team effort. 
other questions and feel free to uh, unmute yourself or put your question in the chat if you have one. For any I, I just want to say a few words because I think joining this meeting, um, when we talk about the individuals that we're serving, sometimes, you know, it's, it's, it's really easy to talk about barriers, but what, what I've learned listening to you all is about your projects are about lifting people up. Um, and it, it's just been amazing to hear. I was literally just chatting with Christy, telling her, I was like, wow, this is literally the highlight of my day. <laughs> um, because it seems like over the past year, you guys have been able to accomplish something and address the needs that of, of the communities that you serve. So I just want to tell you all, thank you again. I, you guys did all the groundwork. Um, so really impressed and, and, and happy to hear everything that, that happened over the last year. So definitely thumbs up. Thank you, Liz. Appreciate that. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions. I, we would ask you to please fill out the evaluation. Uh, Zara posted that a few minutes ago, maybe about 10 minutes ago. So um, if you can please take a few minutes to to fill that out. Uh, one last opportunity here. Does anybody have any additional questions? We have a couple minutes left. Okay. Go ahead. Everyone has power. I saw somebody raise their hand. I did. Or did you, yeah, can you go ahead? Yes. I, would, I just wanted to commend the progress this program has made. I started way back in Miami, the original program. And I'm so proud to see how we have advanced and it has spread. We started in Miami first and to see it gone to Sorota, you know, and keep going up. So I'm so proud and I'm thankful. I'm glad I joined this class so I can see the advancement and the progress y'all are making, especially in the health career field because back then we didn't have the health career. So this is very, very good, very good. Fantastic. I just wanted to commend you for, you know, the advancement that you all have made so far. Well, thank you. I'm still hanging in there, I'm still there. <laughs> <laughs> Not like before, but you know, I'm still there. Don't Make ever give so. up. Huh? Don't ever give up. No, 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 because, because of that, I will not work for Miami Dade Water and so, and I got Spanish fluently. I have it now. I got, you know, I went to school and I got the degree in it. So, you know, it was a, it's a reward for me. Sometimes I go to Georgia to visit my daughter and, you know, I'm able to communicate in Spanish, you know, to people that I meet and stuff like that. So it's a very good program. I'm glad for that. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> okay, thank you for sharing. All right. <laughs> well, and thanks, thanks to all of our, our presenters uh, today and congratulations on all your great work. Thank you once again, Liz and Simply Healthcare for making this all possible. And we do appreciate your taking time out of your afternoon to join us today. And um, I hope that you all have a great afternoon. I do have a question. Thank oh, you, you do have a question? Okay, go ahead, Tom. Yeah. So I was wondering if, um, if all of us that presented, if we were able to get like a PDF of our PowerPoint presentations to you, could could you or Zahara distribute them to us? Because I'd, I'd love to get the presentations from my yes, fellow absolutely. presenters today. Yeah. I'm, I should have mentioned that. We will have this as a recording um, uh, that will be posted on our website and we can absolutely add the, the actual PowerPoints. If you all four of you can send me your PowerPoints, um, we will just add that with the recording so that those would, you know, you can download those separately. That'd be great. Cause there was a lot of good information. I was like looking at like, I was looking at Elena's, I was looking at the others I'm like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> There's absolutely. some more ideas there, some more resources. So that'd that's, be great. That's what this is all about. It's exchange of ideas and information. So thank you for that, Tom. Okay, great. Well, thanks a lot, everyone. You all have a good afternoon. Yeah. You too, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank, thank you so, so much. Thank you.